I'll show you guys later. Maybe I should keep this. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Long time no see, sorry about that. My name is Molly, I'm the maker behind Lefty Knits. I live here in the San Francisco Bay Area with my boyfriend and our cat, Lola, who's very cute. I'll put a picture up because I can't share enough Lola pictures. On this channel, I share the yarny adventures I've been up to, the things I've been knitting, sometimes crocheting, but pretty much knitting. The yarn stores I've been to, the projects I'm interested in working on, all those things. I know there's been a little bit of a change of scenery today. Usually I'm in our bedroom because my boyfriend works from home full time, but he tested positive for COVID like an hour ago. He's quarantining in the bedroom. We live in a three room apartment, essentially. We have a bedroom, a bathroom, and like a kitchen, living, dining room all together. It's also where we have our desks. My boyfriend uh, built his PC and it's a desktop. So he's pretty much in here all the time. It's where he works. Um, he has a huge standing desk. So I don't often have access to this room to just kind of chat away during the day because he is making money. <laughs> we went to a wedding this weekend, which is probably where he picked up COVID. I am okay for the moment. I had COVID in June, which I'll talk about a little bit in a second. So I'm hoping that I managed to stay away from any sort of infection. Maybe my antibodies are still high. We'll see. So what have I been up to the past few months? Probably the most important thing is I finished my PhD. I'm Dr. Lefty Knits now. Um, I finished my PhD in May. It was definitely a very intense crunch time, finishing my projects, writing my dissertation, making sure everything was in order. I'm officially a doctor, not an MD, not a medical doctor. <laughs> Wanna make that clear. I'll throw some pictures up from my graduation. Uh, where I'm wearing all of my regalia. I now own these robes that cost me a lot of money that I'll probably never wear again because I am job hunting. I don't wanna go into it too much, but it's definitely pretty intimidating. I think when you are sort of on this academic trajectory for a long time where you're, you know, in your undergraduate degree, preparing for a PhD or just going straight into a PhD program, when you've sort of had this one track mind for a long time, even though I've thought that I might be, you know, moving away from heading for a tenure track professorship for a while, it's hard to kind of figure out what the next move is. The trajectory f for someone with a PhD when it works out is very linear. So now that I have all these branching paths I could take, it's a little intimidating. It's difficult to figure out what kind of jobs I'm qualified for, how to market myself to someone who doesn't really care about the minutia of my research topic. So that's been definitely a journey. Our hope is to stay in the Bay Area, but I'm open to jobs elsewhere. I'm kind of looking for the best opportunity for myself. My boyfriend is open to coming anywhere with me. He works remote, so I'm starting to purge a little so that I'm ready to move at any time, which I'll talk about a little bit also. So today I wanna to talk about some yarny updates from my life. Maybe there will be a couple little stories about what's been going on sprinkled throughout. I think that this is probably a better way to reintroduce you to what I've been up to. I have been knitting throughout a lot of the stuff that's been going on, but not, like I haven't been keeping very good track of it. I haven't been taking a lot of pictures. Like for example, I knit a lot of baby items that just kind of went out the door <laughs> without me taking any photos of it because I was maybe a little behind schedule on them. Without further ado, here are three of the things that I have been up to in my yarn and knitting endeavors since uh, we spoke last. The first thing I'll talk about is 
this top that I'm wearing. Um, this is a the Lotus Petal Top from Hyris Makes. I believe that's how she says her Instagram, YouTube, etc. handle. Um, she is, her name's Iris. She's another neuroscientist and knitter. Uh, I believe she's based in Cambridge. She's definitely in the UK. Um, and she had a summer tops knit along this year. You could pick from a lot of her like tea, slipover, tank, etc. patterns. And it ran through, I want to say the beginning of July. Maybe it was the end of July. Time is really moving very strangely for me right now. <laughs> she did do like a survey giveaway where you could get a certain amount off of her patterns if you filled it out after completing your item for the knit along. I forgot to do that. I have a few of her patterns. I'm happy to pay full price to support her, so that's fine. So I guess, you know, I signed up for the knit along, but I never really cashed in on it, if that makes sense. Except for the fact that I did finish a garment. So this is, like I said, the Lotus Petal Top. It's made in Knit Picks Gloss Fingering in Velveteen. I want to say I used about two skeins of it. 100 gram skeins. Uh, it's a merino and silk blend. It knits up very nicely. I've been wearing it quite a lot. I took it on a trip to Massachusetts that I'll be talking about in my next segment. On the whole, I'm really happy with this. It's a super easy knit. It is knit bottom up, which can be a little bit stressful, especially if you, like me, don't have a lot of extra money or space to tr buy extra yarn for projects, like I'm often kind of playing yarn chicken or, you know, ending projects a few rows early, that kind of thing. I made this uh, without any problems. It's very comfy. It looks really nice. I, it's pretty cropped. It probably comes to about my belly button and I have been wearing it with dresses a lot. I'm wearing it with a dress now. I'm gonna just, the main thing, I guess, about this is uh, this, motif at the bottom. That's where it gets its lotus petal name. It's basically made by, you know, yarn overs and decreases. Basically you knit in the round up to the underarm, you split to the front and back and knit them um, separately, do a little bit of shaping for the back of the neck, and then you pick up stitches around the neck hole and around the sleeve holes after you I think I kitchenered. Yeah, it looks like I must have kitchenered this. You could probably three needle bind off it and it would be basically the same, but I kitchenered the uh, shoulder part together to put the front and back, make the front and back. Then you pick up around the armholes, knit the ribbing, pick up around the neck hole, knit the ribbing. And it's a great pattern. Uh, it's really wearable and comfortable. I have found by and large it's been pretty comfortable to wear here in the bay area during the summer um i think especially with that silk blend it might be a little bit breezier i'm sorry i hope you can't hear the horns um we live on a really busy street like a pretty busy intersection so i have all the windows shut which is why i might look a little bit dewy but i'm hoping that with the microphones for my AirPods, it won't be too bad. I really wanted to have it done in time to take it to Massachusetts with me on a trip I went on in late May and early June. So it was kind of the thing I was working on as I was like finishing up my PhD. I'll definitely link her down below, link this top down below, both her website and Ravelry so that you can check her out and perhaps get one of her patterns for yourself. All right, so another thing I did was visit a local yarn store in Massachusetts. So there's kind of a story that goes along with this. I was in Massachusetts in the Boston area for my college reunion in late May and early June. We spent two weeks there and we were intending to hang out, go to the reunion, visit my family, and then visit one of my boyfriend's friends in Connecticut who was having a baby shower. Some of those things happened at the reunion, which was halfway-ish, a little less than halfway into our trip. I got COVID. It was 
terrible weather for the reunion. It was like in the 50s and pouring rain all weekend. Uh, so they were like cramming us into tents. Most of the events were slated to be outside. Not really a surprise, but a huge bummer to get COVID 3000 miles from home. Luckily, we were able to visit my aunt and uncle anyway on the Cape. I have family there. Like if you're gonna get COVID 3000 miles from home, that's probably the best case scenario. We canceled the Connecticut portion. So we actually got some of the money back from our trip that we would have been spending. We got to stay with my aunt and uncle for free. Very kindly, they still let us come. As far as I know, nobody got sick, which is good. I'm sure I would have heard by now. If you're gonna be stuck somewhere, it's best to uh, be stuck somewhere beautiful. I'll throw up some pictures of the Cape. Um, it was too bad that I couldn't see most of my family. I saw one of my other aunts there. A lot of my family lives on, on Cape Cod. They had planned this party for me. They bought me a cake. It, a bunch of my relatives were coming down from Boston or from their homes nearby. So we just ate a lot of cake. I slept a lot. I was luckily able to quarantine myself pretty well for my boyfriend. So it seems that he never got COVID. Obviously now he has it literally as we speak. We were able to make our flight home as well, which was a big thing. I was just outside the window of like quarantining time and I was feeling fine. I didn't have a fever. I followed all the guidelines and I was like just able to make our flight, which was perfect. So all that's kind of a long intro to my story about buying yarn in Massachusetts. <laughs> So I've mentioned before, I lived there for eight years. I primarily post-college at least lived in uh, Somerville in the Porter Square, Porter and Davis Square area. And I really, really wanted to go to this yarn store called Mind's Eye Yarn that was in Cambridge, but in Porter Square, which is kind of on the Somerville Cambridge line. And when I lived in Boston, I walked by it every day, but I was too nervous to go in. There was a Michaels across the street. I wasn't as open to spending as much as I do now on yarn. From all accounts, it was a very nice yarn store. Unfortunately, it's closed. I think they're doing some sort of construction on that building or tearing that building down. Instead, I went to a store called Gather Here in also in Cambridge, a little bit of a different part of Cambridge, and it was really nice. We were conveniently spending a day in Cambridge and Somerville. We went to an oyster bar for lunch. We walked around. We bought me a rain jacket, which was great because it rained a bunch that weekend and I didn't really have one. and. Uh, I was kind of planning on buying one there. Then we walked out to Gather Here, which I'll put up some pictures. I got this very pretty skein of yarn. This yarn is um, from Dirty Water Dye Works, which is a Boston dyer. It's the Lillian base, which is 100% superwash merino, um, 400 yards or 365 meters for 100 grams. So just a fingering weight. Uh, two ply and this color is called sea glass. It's always nice for me to bring my boyfriend to a yarn store because I like to knit him a sweater, purse be damned. I just need to make sure that it'll be something he likes. Like this isn't a surprise. He kind of knows that I have a plan to do this in the nearish future. When I'm somewhere in person with him, where he's willing to kind of like look at some yarns with me. He's he's totally chill going to yarn stores with me. A lot of times he'll just find the chair and sit in it and read on his phone, hang out, look at things when I ask him to. How are you? And my boyfriend just came out and we were chatting for a second. Um, I've been kind of like aggressively asking him questions when I look at yarn online when I'm knitting things I'll make him feel them make him look at the colors because he has kind of like 
a particular palette he's interested in. We have talked a lot about like the trade-offs between like a more structured yarn that might give him a sweater that feels a little bit more masculine potentially versus something softer that might like drape a little bit more. I don't mean to say that men, women, any gender can wear any sort of garment or yarn, but knowing his style and what I think he'd like in a sweater, probably something a little bit more rustic would create a shape that he's more interested in. Being able to like get him to touch different yarn types, talk about what it might look like, look at the colors. So we did a lot of that, which was great. I had been really interested in getting some Dirty Water Dye Works yarn for a long time. I was happy to see this yarn. I was happy to be able to grab it. I think my hope and part of the reason I told you my whole COVID tale was that I would be able to buy a yarn to use with this when I was on Cape Cod. So I, there's a few local yarn stores. I visited one before. I was hoping to maybe catch a couple of them in our time down there. Then I got COVID. I'm thinking I might buy some locally dyed yarn to go with this. I hesitate to tell you, <laughs> I hesitate to tell you which one because I'm worried it'll go out of stock. I'll show you guys later. I think I might make the elf male. I forget the designer's name, but I think I might make a short sleeve cropped elf male with this and the two ply fingering yarn that I'm hoping to buy. But yeah, Gather Here is a beautiful store. They have a lot of sewing stuff as well, if that's something you're into. They're in kind of like a cute area of um, Cambridge that has a lot of like coffee shops and stuff, some good restaurants that I've been to before. I definitely recommend it if you're in the area. That's That was a, a pretty big trip that set a little bit of a weird tone for the rest of the summer for me, but I had a great time at the yarn stores. I had a great time seeing friends, seeing my family. So it's all good. I'll be right back. All right. So the last thing I've done this summer and the most recent is that I put aside a bunch of yarn to be de-stashed. So as I mentioned earlier, we may be moving at almost any time, even if we aren't moving out of the Bay Area, I think when I secure employment, we'll be looking for somewhere a little bit bigger. I thought I might go through some of the yarn that I'm getting rid of just to kind of show you what is, uh, what's up? Generally speaking, there's a lot of cotton type yarns in here. I've actually been knitting a lot with cotton recently for a lot of baby things. I knit myself a cotton thing that I'll probably wear soon in my Instagram on this channel. So you'll see it, but um, yeah, I, I'm i kind of over cotton for a while and I've bought a lot of cotton over the years that I just don't think I wanna work with anymore. Overall, I think, you know, I had to be really honest with myself and think, what yarn am I interested in working with in the future? What won't I want to work with? Even if it's a project that I've planned, are there any projects that I just don't really think I want to work on anymore? And that's okay. I have a lot of yarn still. I'm not in danger of running out and I don't really plan on enforcing a no buy rule for myself. I'm, I've been pretty good throughout 2023 being mindful of what I'm bringing into my stash, but, um, you know, I'm still buying yarn. So I don't think, I'm not in danger of running out. If I were, maybe I would keep these, but overall it's just, these aren't the projects that I'm interested in working on. So they gotta go. So I figure I can talk you through some of the yarns. This first one is a Paintbox 100% Wool Worsted Superwash yarn. The shade name is Stormy Gray. I have to weigh this. I don't actually know how much I have. I have a full skein. I might honestly have more. I have all these balls. I was gonna make a September sweater out of this. I mean, most of a September sweater out of this. Oh, is this something else? I chose this yarn 
before I kind of had a grip on fiber more deeply. So, you know, I think I probably would make um, the September sweater and something maybe non-super wash, like brioche is gonna grow so much. Do I want that in a sweater? I don't know. But the bigger problem was that I had never knit brioche before, I don't think. So I was making mistakes all the time. I didn't know how to fix them. They were like, there were weird holes all over the sweater. I realized I wasn't gonna wear it. And now I don't really wanna work with this yarn. So I'm gonna, try to sell this on yarn swap otherwise i'll probably give it away locally another yarn that i have that i th this one's like a little bit harder for me to maybe i should keep this i'm telling myself now that i'm going to keep this this is some super wash merino fingering from cloudborn uh it's a single ply yarn the colorway i have is called ecru i was gonna make a hold me close top by life is cozy with this and a fluffy yarn which i've kept in my stash i just decided like that i wasn't that interested in making it i it's a beautiful top um nothing against the pattern after thinking about it more and leaving it decided that maybe it wasn't something i wanted to make but i have a lot of single ply super wash fingering weight yarns that i've been thinking about making shawls with or something i'm I'm like trying to figure out how to use them because I'm a little bit hesitant since I'm pretty hard on my clothes to make them into garments without either holding them double, holding them with a mohair or something like that. So I might actually use this for a shawl. I might use this with some of those other fingering weight yarns. So look at me talking myself out of giving away yarn. This is Ultra Pima Fine by Cascade Yarns, color 3810. I wanna say it was called like coral or something. It's a very pretty color. Um, the yarn feels pretty nice, but I think I just, like I said, I'm kind of over cotton yarns. I had bought this intending to make a baby sweater for a friend. I haven't, I haven't done that. The baby is now three. I probably bought it when she was a year old or less and I could still make it into something I could save it for another baby or for me or for whoever but I just don't you don't think I want to and, you know I have cotton yarns that are I think a little bit more conducive to the kind of projects I want to do so this is going hopefully also in yarn swap I have two skeins of lena by fibra natura well i think this color is called like oyster or something yeah oyster and white swan oyster and swan i made a top out of this i have um not worn it that much it's not that i don't like this yarn i i didn't have quite enough this yarn was discontinued or I didn't have quite enough to make another project with this. This yarn was discontinued. There were only so many colors to choose from. I picked this. I was thinking I might make something stripey. Um, this is, I mean, it's not a bad yarn. I find working with like linen yarns a little bit difficult, a little bit hard on the hands, painful on the fingers. This yarn is 68% linen, 32% cotton. These are 100 gram skeins and there's 252 yards uh, per skein. I can't think of that many single skein linen projects. I don't really wanna make a striped thing with these two anymore. I just think it's ready for the, it's time for these to find a new home with someone else. Hopefully whoever that is enjoys it. Next, I have some Lion Brand Kobu. I have a little bit of Lichen. Yeah, this is called Lichen. I just finished a baby sweater with this. And I have a bunch of purple. I have a skein that I am currently using, but I have five of these. Uh, this colorway is called Lilac. And my plan, the reason I bought these was to make a So Summer set so jesse may patterns and the pattern is written for fingering weight yarn i want to say maybe fingering weight 100 percent linen but the gauge is like 18 stitches per inch or something and i find this a lot with jesse may patterns i think her gauge for a lot of stuff is very loose and 
I love the way that her finished projects look, at least in the pictures. I think she's super talented. I have plans to make more of her patterns, but I bought this DK weight yarn. This is 100 grams, 232 yards in one of these cakes. Um, I bought this DK weight yarn to make that. And yeah, I just like, I started the shorts. I knit a lot of the shorts. I think I like picked up a stitch or dropped a stitch or did something stupid. And my progress on those came to a screeching halt like a year and a half ago. Uh, I'll probably just keep that skein, I guess, and maybe make some sort of baby item. I actually really like this yarn. Like I could see myself using more of this yarn for something. Like it's, I think it's a pretty good baby yarn. It's like very soft, but I just don't really want to work with it right now. It's pretty easy to get. I got the lichen, this one, like less than six months ago to make the baby sweater that is blocking over there. I figure like, I don't really need to hold on to this right now. Boo is a blend of cotton and uh, rayon from bamboo. It's definitely a fun yarn to work with. I find it a little splitty uh, personally, but it's a good, pretty budget friendly and easily found yarn. I've got this one from Joann's. I've gotten some from Michael's. It's kind of at most of the big box stores, I think. Now the last thing, this yarn is so pretty. I got this at the Black Squirrel Berkeley birthday party. Yeah, they're like birthday celebration. They had door gifts, which was very nice. And I got this Dawn to Dusk gradient. Uh, that's the colorway. This is Apple Tree Knits Stellar Lace. And it's so pretty. It's like this periwinkly, cornflowery blue to purple gradient. This is 50 grams and there's 543 yards in here. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about how I could use this, but I haven't really come up with anything that I like. I'm getting more into shawls, but I'm not a lace shawl person. I don't really want to knit really fiddly, intricate lace shawls. It's just not the kind of knitting that's going to bring me joy. So I looked at, I thought about, you know, maybe I could hold this with a white yarn, maybe I could hold it with a blue yarn, a purple yarn. I've looked at all sorts of yarns, thought about holding it together, and I kind of came to the realization that I was just holding on to this yarn and I was hoping to find a project to make with it for the sake of it. And I just, I have enough yarn for projects that I'm actually really excited about that even though this yarn is beautiful and you know, it's a great memory yarn, I guess, in the sense that I got it from the store I really love for free. It's just not worth it for me to hold on to it. Someone else will really enjoy knitting with this. Someone else should have a crack at this yarn um, because it's very pretty. That's it, that's all I have for you today. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. If you've made it this far into the video and you're not subscribed and you haven't given the video a like, please consider doing those two things. It really would help me out. I'm really curious what sorts of projects you've been making this summer or winter, I guess, if you're in the Southern hemisphere. But overall, like, I think a lot of knitters have a kind of interesting relationship with summer knitting. A lot of us aren't super big fans of like, knit the act act of knitting with cotton or linen yarns is that something that you do do you just go with like fingering weight merino and hope it'll be fine what's your sort of what's your game plan for summer knitting because i'm not sure that i have a super strong one but i guess it's a mix of the two i know some people also are into like knitting socks doing something easy and really small i plan to release a video next week with more info about my current and future projects. Maybe I'll look at a couple other finished objects that I made over the last couple months. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you can check that one out when it's released. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And again, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time.